want us to do? No. Every time someone's <coughs> out, 
You are worse than a hopeless romantic. You're a hopeful one. You're the type of man that was in the world's famous problem by having them all eat out, preferably at a good Chinese restaurant. Can we talk about Jenny? Do you want to discuss this problem sensibly and sincerely, or do you want to challenge the New York Times, the New York Times crossword puzzle for us? Oh, stop counting. We make you ask that because you don't have to answer. May I interrupt your train of venom? Now, can we talk about things sincerely? What have you done for Billy? Change. He's to come back to New York after She just turned 17. Something was bound to happen to her. Well, you have no legal right to her, of course. You understand that? Certainly. Then tell her to come home. I have. But she'd like to try with me for a year. She's not happy in New York. Nobody's happy in New York. They're lies. I can't fight you. If you want to take her, then take her. But I think you'd be making a mistake. She still has another year of high school left. Believe it or not, they have good schools out here. I can show you some, if you like. Oh, that should be fun. Something like the Universal Studio Tour. What a snob you are. Thank God there was beautiful as well. What is there so beautiful about your life that it's so makes what is there so beautiful about your life that it's so important to put down everyone else's? Forty square blocks. Bounded by Lincoln Center on the west, and Cinema 2 on the east, it's not the center of the universe. <coughs> I grant you, it's an exciting, stimulating, fabulous city, but it's not Mecca. It just smells like it. Who cares about New York, or Boston, or Washington, or Philadelphia? I don't care where Jenny lives, but how? She's an intelligent girl with a good mind. Let it grow and prosper. But what is he going to learn in a city that has ballet, parking, just to pick up four bagels, and the Hollywood Quarter? I've been to Martha's Vineyard in July, and... Heaven protect me from another intellectual Cape Cod summer. The political elite queuing up in beat channels, watching old Bogart pictures, sitting there eating ice cream cones, and reading the New Republic. You need pleasant. No, your political friends never impressed me. I remember one hot Sunday afternoon in Hyannisport when our ambassador in some war-torn Middle Eastern country was in a state of despair because he couldn't get the hang of throwing a frisbee. I went to a charity luncheon in East Hampton once raise money for the California grape pickers. There's this teeming mob of women who just must spend twelve thousand dollars on new Gucci pants in order to raise two thousand dollars for the grape pickers. Why don't they just melt the pants? He was terrific when he used to write like that. I didn't see the last picture you wrote, but they tell me it worked very well in the backward area. Was I like anything like you before? I said all the candle please. Well, no wonder no one's supposed to be here for this. No, no wonder no one spoke to me here for the first two years. Lucky you. Look, can we talk about Jenny? Jenny, yes. What a good idea. You're a big judge of the person. <coughs> you have the right to make a free choice. Get her for the summer. That's enough. If the judge is seeing your lifestyle, you'd be lucky to get her leg day after dinner. This is Thanksgiving. She came without your permission. She never had a very good head for dinner. Oh, that's why we had to discuss your lifestyle. I don't have a lifestyle. I have a life. Yeah, right. The only time you're alive is Tuesday mornings in the newspaper, when the magazine in the magazine at the newsstand. You're a boy in newsprint, sipping on everyone else's lifestyle and adding up the healthy aspects of the human condition. Or because dollar copy, who wants to read about happiness? Sometimes actually, you wouldn't consider coming back east. Only big one there is help leave. Wouldn't you like to you, know, you want me to tell me what Jenny has to say about you? Who was it? She told me. She thinks that I'm a sexy you bitch. She also thinks I'm a funny you bitch. She, she's afraid of me. She's a thing that she She respects me and wouldn't want to become like me. Yeah. I think we have a normal mother-daughter relationship. Tell me she feels stifled. Like the only time she can breathe really when she's out here. <coughs> well, you know, uh, back in New York, I have a wonderful nose and throat man on East 84th Street. How can you be so flippant when it comes to your own daughter's well-being? 
And how can you be so confident not to recognize a healthy, rebellious attitude in an adolescent? If she didn't complain, I would probably send her to the of stress. But to see me 10 months of the year is more natural. Your one is going to I think by and large, she and I have managed quite well, but it's obvious, like all young girls, she needs a father image. I don't mind. <coughs> this is only July and August, and I might as well be you. Like I said, Miss Thanksgiving, she came without your permission. She never had a very good head today. Look, I don't want to mess with you up or anything, but can you please get back to Jenny? Jenny, yes. What a good idea. Thank you. Are you going to help me? Bye. 
Send Jenny home? She'll be back in two weeks. Not if I put heavy weights on her feet. I mean, offer me a suggestion for old time's sake. You know my suggestion. I only have one more year with her. In September, she'll go to college. In four years, she'll come out a revolutionary or none. It's even worse unless you are me. A little bit of both won't be too bad. Do you like your mother? She's dead. Don't quibble. Do you like her? For an erotic woman, she wasn't too bad. I don't like mine much. Can you imagine being a pain for 78 years? I felt something was wrong even when I was in the room. I never really felt comfortable. I think I was hanging too low. People like you and me are too selfish. I mean, maybe we should have found you. And we should have left. And we could have stayed together and we should have let Jenny go. What do you think? I changed my mind. I think I like you again.
me blow you into this. I mean, can three of us talk it out? Let me get Jenny up here. No! If I have to give her up to get her back, then let's do it. You mean it? You let her stay? You think you're in for a Why do you touch all this for clothes for her? You take a compliment? You're not the hand I left nine years ago. And I'm missing the ovaries to prove it. Well, guess who's trying to fuck now? <laughs> you never thought I'd say yes, did you? I don't think you're prepared to take on your own daughter. Watching her swim for eight weeks on the beach is not the same as being a parent. Don't look now, Billy, but you just lost your number. Well, thinking, well, you think I'm scared? You're right. <laughs> I love it. Oh, God, I love it. The way you, uh, you have to turn the winner. You'll be dead broke by this. Well, I think you're doing a terrific thing, man. So do I. And if I feel for any reason things are not working out, I'll send it back to you. Yeah, you will. You're a father now, Bill. Well, I suppose you want to be here again. Well, you suppose we're all not seeing her. I'll call her when I get to New York. What should I tell her? Tell her I hope to be very happy and I'm selling her TV collection. Someone else. 
I would have been perfectly happy going with Peter Gabler. Try Paul's motor. Try setting up. What time? Like, that's what you say. Who just check me out? That's what you were on. Jimmy, that's over again. You'd be pleased to be nice to me and pay me one bloody compliment. I've been getting dressed for the court affair since six o'clock this morning. Just look, that doesn't do a thing to the brain. Why don't we just watch on television? We can stay in bed, drink champagne, and make love. And if they done away, we can change the dial.
Mas o que? Tá vendo ela fazendo as gafas lá? Tem um peito que nem esquece dela. Não era assim. Onde tiver vida? 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 Ladies and gentlemen of the Academy, I thank you for this award. I have a lump in my throat, so I can't pull my dress. <laughs> what are you doing in here? This is all rare. No, it isn't. We're across the hall. Come out of there, you twit. I'm not holding this all rare. 203 and 204. We're in 201 and 202. Do you want to go segment 201 and 202? Go right there. Always make friends easily. You talk. Who's that? That? Crazy. Don't think that's a pair of now trap. Oh, I'm thinking of you. You've been gloating all evening. All pardon for fresh and evil. What did you say? Because I'm a lady. A loser and a lady. A great loser and a greater lady. Who was that girl you grew up on? I'll just give that girl and put dress drop on one. If I had to count old girls and drink the dresses I put them on, I would never have time to go shopping. Did I tell you I saw what's the name of a lady? Who? What's the name? The one I saw in the lady. Sit down a bit. Barbara. What's that? What's in the lady? It's hard to lose it. 
doing in London?
Bromwood? Renard? Benjamin? Pick one. That doesn't sound good. What do you mean, that doesn't sound good? What? Fruit jar? Brunk horse. Brunk horse? No, I don't want brunk horse. What's wrong with Brunk Horse? He's just like a horse doctor! <laughs> I got some out of the sauce. Oh, this is crazy. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, let's call the hotel. Hey, John, I'm going to come back in. <coughs> yeah, hi. <coughs> Operator? Yeah, can I have the front desk, please? Yes, hi, this is Mr. Hollander in room 203. Yeah, I'm, uh, why just had a little accident on this one, boy? Yeah, so you think your foot might be broke. Mm-hmm. Could you get it to the doctor? Oh, you would? All right, thanks. You should have told him what kind of doctor. This is Beverly Hills. They'll probably send me a psychiatrist. Well, they're pretty bad. I better talk to them. All right. Quick, cover the phone, you're causing another scream. Yes. Operator? <coughs> no. Just my wife. <laughs> yes. Can you get a food service, please? Food service? Yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm going to get food back in one day. I don't know how. I'm going to get a solid steel ball. And on the first serve, I'll just, I'll just break it back. Oh, I'm
can only do with your best friends, and well, you, Edgar, are our best friends. We don't have any better friends than you. Because if we did, I would have told you where to shove your racket! Oh, what are you crazy? What are you blaring up for? It wasn't our fault. It wasn't our fault. It wasn't our fault. A woman stood there defenseless with her laces open. Would you hit it to me? Oh no! You hit it on the cripple one time. Hey, it wasn't cripple until she fell. <laughs> <coughs>
laugh, it just went through my foot. I hope you're Blue, huh? What state of blue do you want? White or dark? I'm 
game, Cockfield. Friends! Ah! You can't kill him! I'll be on a plane with a dead husband! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, he kicked me! Oh. What a place to kick me. Oh! Are you crazy? Right. 
No, no, no need to freak out about this. Is what? We'll get you some water. We'll get you fixed up. Water, that's good. Plain thing stores, you know. <laughs> uh, watch for falling debris here in California. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get up, honey. Uh, who are you, anyway? All right. Honey, you're not, you're not drinking the water. All right. <laughs> Stick on. No need to freak out. Panic is the quickest way to divorce. Wake up! I'm oh, sorry. Shouldn't have done that. Sorry. All right. Look, we gotta get you up. We'll get you up. We'll get you moving around. You'll get a little air in your lungs and such and things and we'll move. You're not gonna help me at all, are you? <laughs> no. This is God punishing me. Why you right there? So, what am I gonna do? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hello, this is Mr. Michaels, angry Mr. Michaels in room 203 and 4. Yeah, that's right. I was kept up all night by a leaky faucet. No, I don't want it fixed. I want another room. I can move out immediately. My wife, she'll be here any minute. What? What? My wife is here? You send her up without calling me? What kind of hotel is this? Can't you send somebody to stop her? Oh my god. <laughs> Who is it? Uh, Millie? Yes. Hold on, honey. I'll be there in a second. I'm cleaning up the bedroom. Just lay here, right? I'm gonna run out there. When I close the door, lock behind me, okay? Don't let anybody in. You can't hear me, can you? Just a minute, honey. Hi, sweetie. Hello. So long. Why didn't you pick me up at the airport? Why? Why? I was sick. I've been sick all night. I threw up in the other room. It's gross. Don't go in there. <laughs> the doctor just left. He said I have acute gastroenteritis. Oh it's nothing more. Oh gosh, when did this happen? Oh, about two o'clock this morning. <laughs> uh, spaghetti with white clam sauce and tacos. <laughs> it was a Mexican-Italian restaurant. Spaghetti with tacos? Yeah, some tortillas parmesan. Uh, I never had that kind of food before. Two people at the next table. They got sick. I thought they had the flu. <laughs> well, you look terrible. You better lay down. No. No. I'm not supposed to lay down. It makes me nauseous. I like this room. This is comfy. I need some common things spangle. <laughs> common things spangle? It stops nausea. Well, did you call the drugstore? Yeah. They don't have it. It has, uh, it has codeine in it. The nearest place to have it is the drugstore Animal Santa Monica Boulevard, but they don't deliver. I'm going to have to go over there myself. I'm just nervous about throwing up in a taxi. Oh. All right, I'll go. Where's the prescription? What prescription? Didn't the doctor give you a prescription? They're not going to give you codeine without a prescription. Yes, they will. In California, they will. The company's in Well, you don't need a prescription. Just in the cab driver. I'm exhausted. I just flew in from Philadelphia. I hear you can't trust the cab drivers around here. They're notorious for going for medicine and never coming back. Oh, I'd kill for a good time with the infantry. Well, what are you going to do about the bar mitzvah? We're going. I didn't come all the way from Philadelphia to miss my nephew's bar mitzvah. Never mind. Harry just called. He said he wants us to get down there as soon as possible. So why don't you go downstairs and get a cab and I'll finish getting dressed, huh? It's just after 11. I thought we didn't have to be there until 1. That's for the others. Harry wants us to be there early so we can get a good seat down front. See, his kid's got this really soft voice. He didn't want us to miss his speech. So why don't you go downstairs and get a gab, and I'll finish getting dressed. And what am I going to wear? What? What do you mean, what are you going to wear? Didn't you bring a dress? I told you to bring a dress. They lost it. They can't find my luggage. Who lost it? In airlines, they lost my new luggage, my new dress, my shoes, everything. They lost your luggage. The good luggage I gave you for Christmas? That gets me insane. And this day and age, they still lose luggage. Well, they said they called me at the hotel and they found it. I just wanted to come back here and say, oh, hot bath and a nap. No. No time for a nap. I know these airlines. you got to make a fuss. Call a cab. We're going down there and demand satisfaction. I want satisfaction. I want my bar mitzvah dress. All right. We'll go to Beverly Hills. We'll get you a new dress, an even better dress. Come on. This trip is already costing us a fortune. And why did you take this suite? This is so expensive. I wanted you to be comfortable to celebrate our new trip, uh, our first trip to California. It was a mistake. The bedroom is stifling. It's all those vines outside the windows. You can't breathe. I'm going to ask them to close off that room, and we'll just keep this room. This room is cozy. There are no beds in this room. Oh. 
Well, I didn't know you wanted to stay over. I thought we were going to San Francisco today after the bar mitzvah. The same day? Then when am I going to see Los Angeles? Well, there's not that much to see. You know, not that many points of interest. It's the third largest city in the United States. Only in population. I mean, there are plenty of people to see, but we don't know any of them. Three thousand dollars. This is the bar mitzvah. I've seen them before. They're not worth that much of a trip. Don't ever do this to me again. Do what? Do what again? I didn't do anything. Make us make seven friends. I mean, for what? We're so worried that something's going to happen to us and the kids are going to be left alone. Look what happens to us separately. You lose my luggage and you get gastro and whatever. I gotta go to the bathroom. Now? I have fun in four hours. Now's a good time. I told you. I grew up in there. And I say I throw up. I mean, everything. The bad stuff in here. That's everywhere. It's disgusting. I wouldn't let you go in there. Maybe get sick before. Not on a vacation. Not on a holiday. I think on a holiday, once you try to serve some sense of romanticism, at home, I wouldn't mind. I can't wait till we get home. It's very, very peculiar. Are you sure you don't have a fever or something? That's possible. The doctor says it's very possible I may have periods of fever and periods of not knowing how certain inexplicable events may have happened. Inexplicable events? Oh, I don't know. I mean, the doctor just said that if something happens that I can't explain, that's very possible. I don't understand what you're saying. That's exactly my point. I have to go to the bathroom. Please! Um, Give me a chance to make it acceptable for you first. Please, it means a lot. He's been married 15 years. You've never played the bathroom party before. Oh, I think it's high time I started. Don't you? Why don't you look at a pamphlet or something and find us a nice restaurant for tomorrow? Anywhere with Mexican Italian, okay? I'll just be in here cleaning up the bathroom, okay? So just sitting there and. Oh, <laughs> Well, with the bed. 
I'm just trying to think of something to break up the monotony of a bit. I don't think our love making was so monotonous. It's not monotonous, honey. It's the bed that gets repetitious. I think I'm having another attack. Well, it serves you right. Who doesn't eat Mexican Italian food anyway? I am not the only one who's sick. I'm sick too. Sick and I'm tired. No! No!
morning. I never in my life see anything like that. What do you expect me to do? Go to the garbage and say congratulations to the man who paid for this woman to sleep with you? He doesn't know that you know. Oh, I did, then. It's just on him, right? Only you and I know that I know. <laughs> Billy, we'll do whatever you want. If you want to take the next plane back to Philadelphia, we'll go. I'll go with you, please. No, no, I'm not going to give you or your stupid family that satisfaction. I'm going to go to I'm going to go, and I'm going to go with my head held high, and I'm going to behave with more dignity and class than you've ever seen. I'm not going to leave you with it. In fact, I'm not even going to do it. I am going to forgive you. I am going to forget that something like this ever happened. I'm going to understand the reasons why it happened, and I will never bring it up again as long as you live. I am now going to Beverly Hills and send you every cent you've got. Oh, uh, wait, Millie. Let me go with you. I I'll walk behind you. I'll carry your purse. We'll go together. Tonight we'll get a new room and we'll start all over. Can we do that, Millie? Can we do that? I like that part. I like to try to build our marriage on trust you. Thanks. I know something like this will never happen to us again. <laughs> oh, it won't, honey. I can promise you that. Millie, I'm so sorry I hurt you. I love you more than anything, Millie. I love you. Please, <laughs> And then we can go, okay? Should we leave her a note or something? Uh, no, I don't think so. She's probably used to this kind of thing. You're such a thoughtful woman, Millie. You know, I love you right now more than I have my entire life. Gosh, I'm lucky. <laughs> <coughs>